tuning you can't hear. Hmm. They're absolutely right. That is no exaggeration. Repitch by Synchro Arts is the best vocal tuner I have ever used. For years, I have solely used Melodyne. That has been my favorite go-to tuning plugin. And then I kind of went into Auto-Tune a little bit, but I usually just use Auto-Tune for some kind of real-time tuning, but it usually doesn't ever make it into my full production. It's more just for me to listen to while I'm producing. When I first saw Repitch and heard about it, and I looked at the reviews, and I just knew I had to get my hands on it so I could show you, it has exceeded all of my expectations. Let me show you some examples. So here's the vocal we're gonna be working with. I intentionally left this bridge pretty undesirable. I'm pretty flat in there and it doesn't sound super great, but I wanna show you how powerful this plugin is and how you can truly not tell if there's any tuning being done. So let's listen to it. I, you are, you're now alive. So that definitely needs fixed. Now, a quick note, if you are gonna use the ARA version, you do need to be running Logic and Rosetta as of now. So once it's up, I just gotta start and stop it to get it in here. I... All right, so here's the part of the vocal that we need to work on. So let's talk about the user interface first. First and foremost, let me show you how we move around. An easy way is down here, we can click and drag this box. I can go over in here and see exactly where my playhead is. If I need this waveform bigger or smaller, I can click here and I can make that adjustment. I'm not affecting the actual waveform. All I'm affecting is the visual here in the plugin. I also can control my zoom right here, which conveniently I can also grab right here on the box and do the exact same thing. Now the same controls are over here on the right, except for this waveform here is going to control the size that I see in the plugin window. So you can pretty much just adjust that to taste. Now let's go over some of the tools we'll be using. By default, you're gonna have the selector tool up, which is gonna be your hotkey cue. This is your main tool that you'll probably be using. I can just select a specific note to make changes. I can adjust timing. In addition, using those left and right, if I hold option, I can adjust the anchor points. This is hugely powerful. And you can see that the anchor point on the left stayed put so I can make some more fine tuned adjustments. That's probably something we'll be using later. Now, if you download this plugin, one thing I did notice is that by default, when I dragged the notes, it was like this. That can be helpful for fine tuning, but a lot of times at first you want it to snap to the note. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to settings, and then you're just gonna make sure that this drag notes and semitone steps is selected. Now when I drag it, it's gonna stick to those semitones. But if I still want those fine tune adjustments, I'll just hold option down. Next, we have the center notes tool or C. As soon as we select that tool, you'll see this little center note box pop up at the bottom and I have a slider here from zero to 100% and that's going to adjust how accurate those notes are snapped to the scale that Repitch thinks the song's in. So let's select these notes here and as I drag it, you're gonna see them slowly start to snap a little closer. Next, we have the draw tool or D. This is probably gonna be your second most used tool and what just absolutely drew me here. No pun intended by saying drew me here. This is so powerful to go in and make changes. Watch how easy this is. This note here, literally click and hold, drag that nice and smooth. Now you wouldn't wanna make it that smooth because it takes all the life out of the vocal, but let's take a listen. You are. Now you gotta listen really close to tell if that's been processed and that's an extreme process, but that just shows you how transparent this plugin is. And here's the original. You are. I can already see that this note jumps up here and then goes down and it kind of goes down there. So let's just start here and let's just make that a little more smooth there. And then let's smoothen this out here. You're now alive. If you listen closely when I say now, you hear it kind of drop off, which you can see on the waveform here. You're now alive. But that quick change on repitch quickly took that away. You're now alive. You can't even tell that I corrected that. All right, next we have the split tool, which is pretty much scissors. You most often use the split tool or the scissor tool on big kind of transitions like this, or maybe even kind of right here. And so what I would do is I would click in between those two notes, and now you can see it already recognizes that, oh, that note's probably supposed to be somewhere down there. 
The other place you might use it is you can see that this note here stays pretty in tune and then I kind of get a little wavy at the end. So what I could do, take the scissor tool and then just draw that. Just fix that portion there. Go grab my selector tool and then just press J to join back up. And now I've just fixed that portion. You're now alive. You can't even tell that I adjusted that. Now the warp tool I'm still kind of figuring out, but I'll show you a quick example on how I think I might use it. So let's say I want to make some big changes to this section right here. So I'll hold down shift and I'm going to just kind of put outer bounds there. And then now I want to just put a point right here. That way I have this word here, this word here. I'm just kind of learning how to use this tool. So I haven't used it a whole bunch. It looks like it's adjusting some timing here. And so I can make some minor adjustments. I can do a lot of manipulation with the vocal. Let's see how this sounds. You now alive. Obviously I adjusted the timing there, but something that I can already hear is how transparent it was. It didn't sound super processed. So I bet you can really manipulate your vocals to fit if there's some type of timing issues. What I love is that I always see the original note and waveform. So I can really tell how much I have manipulated this vocal. It's something minor, but it's something incredibly helpful. Especially if you go in and you kind of destroy the vocal, you can always reset, yeah. Or you can kind of go in and say, okay, here was a starting point. Let me make a quick correction. For instance, this is pretty far off. It probably sounds terrible, but I could still go in here and be like, oh, the note was actually supposed to be up in there right and then kind of get back to my starting point. All right, with that, let's go correct this vocal. A selects all, let's right click, reset selected notes, and then let's zoom back out. Now when we're just getting started, there's a couple presets up at the top we can use. If it was an instrument, we can use that. Obviously this is a vocal. We have high pitch, low pitch, and then just snap all note centers, snap all to scale note centers. So if you want 100%, you know it's gonna be 100%, you can click that or you can set a user preset. I usually like to do 75%. So here's how I made that 75% preset. I click this icon here and now we have this come up here. I can tell it to snap all notes to the measured scale. The measured scale being repitched listening to the vocal and picking the scale that bets fit, but you can edit that later. Snap all notes to, and then here's 50%. I'll just drag this to 75. Now something I would love to be able to do is just double click this number and be able to type it in. Something minor, but we can tell it to shift formats. That's something I like to do on my own. Then this high resolution editing, you can just pause the video and read that real quick, but I don't use that. And then let's save as user macro settings. It'll bring up the window. Obviously I've already done this, but I would name it whatever I wanna name it and then save it. So now when I go up here, I go down to user, there's my snap to 75%. It's gonna remind me, say, hey, all the editing I've done, do I wanna just have it go back and then snap everything to 75%? For me, the answer is yes. So realize if you've went through and you've made some editing changes and then you just decide to go in and do that, do not do it that way. If you're in that position where you've already went in, you've already done some editing, and then you realize that you wanna go through and actually snap everything, you're gonna to wanna to use the center tool. If you were wanting everything, you'd press A to select all, press C for the center tool. Obviously everything's been snapped to 75% right now, but in your case it wouldn't. And then you could just go grab everything and then it'll keep your adjustments and then just slightly tweak them. Let's hear how it sounds at 75. You are, you're now alive. So many things to see to make memories. All right, there's a little work to do in there still. If you saw it jump around there, something I actually do like that it does is if you're super zoomed in like this, as the playhead goes across, it's going to jump up and down so you can always see the playhead. But for this example, I don't want it jumping around. We know we're just working on this portion of the vocal so I can actually use the screen lock. That is this icon right here. So now you won't see it jumping around. You're now alive. It just stays put and as it continues going past, it'll stay frozen on this screen here. Just remember to take your screen lock off if you do want it following. You are. So let's split this note here. If I double click a note, it will snap it. And if I double click anywhere over here, it'll play for me. You are. 
So let's smoothen out that with the draw tool. Same thing here. You are. All right. You're now alive. If we look here, that's pretty jagged. So let's kind of smooth that out. Same thing right here. And this is what we did earlier. So let's fix that again. Let's smooth this out. You're now alive. So here's something we can do here. Grab the scissor tool. Let's split those notes. Double click that. Double click that. Get them back online. If I select this note, if I hold option, I can just grab this portion here and just lift it back up to center. There we go. Now it's a lot more center. And then we can adjust the attenuation there. And that's another way we can smooth that out. You're now alive. Now this doesn't sound bad over here, but let's fix it anyways. Let's fix that drop off. There we go. Select those, press J, make it all one note again. You're now alive. Let's listen to this last part. So many things to see to make memory. That's just a bad note. So many things to see to make memory. So many things. So many things to see to make memory. So many things to see to make memories. All right, let's listen to it. You are. You're now alive. So many things to see to make. And then last bonus tip if you're a vocal line user. There's clearly some timing issues here. You are. I can hear one of those that are really bad. I don't even know why I kept it in there. But we just spent all this time tuning that lead vocal. Now I could just bounce it out and use vocal line in a normal fashion. But without having to bounce it out, I can have vocal line go listen to repitch and just use what I've done in repitch. That is beneficial, especially if I need to go make some changes before the final bounce out. You are. You're now alive. Too easy. So many things to see to make memories. So all that work we did in repitch just made those doubles so much easier. Zero work to do on my doubles now. I, you are. You're now alive. So many things to see to make memories. And last but not least, I love when companies do free trials. Synchro Arts will let you download a free trial of Repitch so you can try it yourself. So I hope this helped. If you liked what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But until next time, I'm Phil. Keep creating music.